Good evening. Good evening. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Every time we come in, it's just, it's good to be in the house. Amen? Good to be in the house. Announcements are that tomorrow night, uh, ladies, ladies, tomorrow night we'll be meeting at, am I butchering the name wrong? El Mariachi. That's tomorrow night at Zion's Crossroads for a ladies' night for dinner, dinner and fellowship, good food and good friends. So that's tomorrow night at, please tell me the time, is that 6.30? 6.30 tomorrow night. If you're, if you're a lady anywhere near there, you should be there. Amen? So that's tomorrow night. Uh, also, we want to keep in, keep in prayer the, um, the Jameson uh, Jameson uh, family and the Step family want to keep them lifted up. Um, also, Christine and Sandra, our sister Christine and Sandra, and uh, the work that they're doing in uh, in Charlottesville, they're actually also looking for help there as well. So, if you know anybody that's serious about employment, uh, we can connect you with them and the work that they're doing. Um, any other announcements that we have? Last Tuesday, I'm sorry, last Sunday to last Tuesday uh, was Rosh Hashanah, which means that the new year on the Jewish calendar has already jumped off. We celebrate the 31st. In the Jewish community, they've been celebrating all week already that it's a new year. So we want to thank God in advance for a new year. Amen? New year comes new mindset, new beginning, new outlook, uh, new desires that you have for the new year. So we thank God for the new year. We thank God also for this house of worship, allowed to worship here in this place uh, that God has blessed us with. Amen? Thank you, God. We're going to be in Luke chapter 11 this evening. Also, we remember again um, the Wright family as well. Um, uh, Tamara's daughter, Anna, was in the hospital, had surgery. We're going to keep her lifted up and covered in prayer. Also, for the surgery went well, but we believe in God also uh, for a speedy recovery. Speedy recovery. Amen. Also, uh, also our brothers and sisters out west, Danny and Kyra, we want to keep them lifted up in prayer uh, and have them covered as well. We're going to be tonight, thank you, God. We're going to be tonight in, in Luke chapter 11. Thank you, God. We're going to look at verses 1 through 13, hoping that this passage will add some value to you. Amen. We talked a little bit about value and worth last Sunday, uh, but we also believe that the word of God adds value to your life. Amen? So we believe that this word is going to impact you and add some value to you. Uh, Luke chapter 11, we're going to read verses 1 through 13. Also, Linda Bates, she was on my heart earlier today. Sister Linda Bates, we want to keep her lifted up in prayer, have her covered in prayer. Also, thank you, God. Uh, Janet and Bill Thompson, two people on my heart today, throughout today. Janet and Bill Thompson, keep them covered in prayer as well. Um, Shirley and Natalie Gibson, they're down south, so we want to keep them covered in prayer uh, that God provides and also that God protects, protects them as well. Luke chapter 11, thank you God. Luke chapter 11, we're going to read verses 1 through 13. Thank you God. Thank you, God. We believe God's got something good in the word this evening. Thank you, God. So Luke chapter 11. Thank you, Lord. Verses 1 through 13. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God familiar passage and parable that's in there, but we want to get revelation out of there. Thank you, Lord. Luke 11, verses 1 through 13. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. If you're there, say, I'm still with you. I'm with you. And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he had ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. He said unto them, when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done as, as it is in heaven, so in earth. Give us this day. Give us, give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, which, 5 through 11 is where we're going to park at, but he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend, shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine is in a journey, come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he, he from within shall answer and say, trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed, and I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needed. Put the stars beside verses 9 through, 9 through 10. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will you give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he of a fish give him a serpent? Or if you have shall ask an egg, Will he offer him a scorpion? If you then be an evil, that's two stars beside verse 13. If you be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Father, we thank you for grace and for mercy tonight. We thank you for divine appointments that have been kept and met at this very moment. That we couldn't be anywhere else other than where you wanted us to be at this moment in time. For such a time as this, you would ask us to be in this place under this word at this moment. So we thank you right now that uh, for those that are with us here presently and those that are connected with us online, Father, that whatever is happening in this room can also happen in a living room. We ask for the inspiration and movement of the Holy Spirit to guide us to all the truth in your word to empower us, to enlighten us, Father, and to even challenge us through your word tonight. Lord, we give you all the honor tonight. We give you all the praise tonight. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I like, um, I like, ac I like acronyms. I like word association. When I'm reading stuff in the Bible, I, in order for them to remember it, there's always something in it that, that sort of holds me back or keeps me back. And so when we think about the word ask, ask in its definition is A-S-K, ask, seek, knock. So he's already speaking when he tells us to ask, right? That there's something beneath that. It's just not something verbally expressed. That there's something deeper than that. Amen? So he said it came to pass, Luke, Luke 11 said it came to pass it was, as it was with his disciples that a few of his disciples came to him and said, teach us how to pray like John taught us how to pray. And he said, he said when you pray, say, which means verbatim. Because when, when Jesus expresses that way, and he said, when you pray, say, he said, you do as I do, you get the results that I got. So he said, when he says, pray, say this, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, so shall it be in earth. Give us, give us day by day our daily bread, because this is different from Matthew chapter 6. Forgive us our sins. We also forgive everyone that's indebted to us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. So he was teaching them how to pray. Amen? Okay, well, this is, so this is not really, we would say, the Lord's Prayer, because Jesus wouldn't pray this, because he wouldn't pray for forgiveness. So he's going he's gonna to leave sort of a template out there for you, to, for you to read by, to pray by. This is something for you when you talk to him. So when he talked to him, he would talk to him in John 16, and he would say, Lord, everybody that you gave to me, I never lost anybody. That was his prayer unto the Father. But this one, 
was meant to be a template for us to go by, and also it's, it's information in there that we're supposed to get. When you pray, say, say this, our Father, which means it's inclusive to everybody. That means that nobody's left out, that he's everybody's daddy. Whoever wants him can get him, our Father, and you can't say our Father without reaching your arms out to include everybody in it. Amen? Hallowed be thy name. His name is sacred, should not be abused or mistreated. Don't use the Lord's name in vain. Thy kingdom come to this earth as it is in heaven. So he's like, whatever is happening, whatever the purpose is that you have for us, bring it down here. That I want to see the fulfillment of what you've been asking us to do and what you pronounce for us to do. Your kingdom is going to come. Give us day by day daily bread, both naturally and spiritually that he's going to feed us, that he's going to sustain us, he's going to keep us naturally, that we won't starve and go hungry. But spiritually, our spiritual man won't starve and go hungry. He will feed us, he will give us daily bread. Amen? Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Lead us not to temptation and deliver us from evil. Everybody say and. Okay, verse 5 says and, which of you, because it means he's continuing, he told them the template, but they need to give them a parable. Which of you shall have a friend that shall go unto you at midnight and say unto you, friend, lend me three loaves of bread? No friend of mine. You're not knocking on my door at 12 o'clock and asking for three loaves of bread. Right? But culturally, it's different. They, 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 culturally, they were saying that whenever somebody came to the house, it would be rude if you didn't place food before them, to honor them and to welcome them. Amen? That whatever hour it was, when somebody stopped by, it was meant to be that you would be hospitable to whoever stopped by, you would present food to them. Have you gone to your grandparents' house and what they do all the time? Or your mother's house, whoever it is, your auntie, whenever you come to the house, they want to fix you something to eat, right? It's customary. It's also out of love, though, too, that we want to honor you. Thank you for coming by. Amen? Because when you think, it's one thing for people to think of you, it's another thing for them to actually pull up and say, look, how are you doing? I wanted to see you. Well, you were on my heart. You were on my mind. I wanted to spend time with you. And friendship. So he said, which of you has a friend that all of a sudden had guests that stopped by in the middle of the night and did not want to be rude to the guest, wanted to be hospitable, wanted to feed them, but didn't have anything to eat? And then we'll come to your house, knock on your door, and say, look, can I get three loaves of bread so I can feed the guests that came by? He didn't say, come over there and join us. He said, come over there and ask for three loaves. Of You're not even going to invite me over? You're going to ask me for bread at 12 o'clock? But it was, about, it was about a custom. It was about whoever was invited. I need to present something to them when they come. And the, and the Bible says, look, that friend is going to say, I'm tired. My children are asleep. We're all in bed. Sh the door is shut. It's too late for all this. My children are with me. I cannot rise and give thee. Verse 8 says, but because of their relationship, I'm paraphrasing, because of their relationship, he's going to get up, suck his teeth, give him as many as he needs because of importunity, because I, sh I should do this, because they asked. Amen? Because it's, it's one thing for, for you to, because uh, God never asked you to be a mind reader. It's a whole other thing for somebody to genuinely ask and the need be relevant and real. Amen? It's a whole different thing when it comes to sob stories. Yes? It's a whole different thing, and, and I've, said, I've said this before, and it bears being repeated again tonight. You can say no, still be saved, Still be Christian, still be nice, on your way to heaven. You can say, and you should, no should be easily flowing off your lips the same way yes does. Amen. The same way we sometimes say amen in the house, you can also say no. So when somebody, so you have that right to say no, but he's, he's saying because the, because the need was authentic and you had the means to help, you should help. Because he was saying in the text he didn't want to. But because he had it there and the need was genuine, 
and the friend generally asked. Even when he was, he was grudgingly, he said, I still got to do it because it's, it wouldn't be right if I didn't do this. And because we have equity built up in our friendship, there might come a time when I need to go knock on his door at, at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and do the same for somebody that stops by my house. Do unto others. You treat other people how you want to be treated. And so even though he wasn't in the best of moods, because who is at 12? When you woke up in the middle of the night, you heard somebody knocking on your door. But because of their friendship, he wiped the coal out of his eyes, got past all of, the, all of his physical stuff in terms of how he was feeling, and then realized, I should be doing something because my friend did ask. Amen? Thank you, God. And I say unto you in verse, verse 9, ask. Everybody say ask. And it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Amen. For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. So every time you see ask, you're going to remember A-S-K. Because you're going to ask, and you're going to seek, and you're going to knock. Everybody say ask. Okay, ask, the word for ask automatically implies that you're going to use your mouth. Amen? So Ephesians 3.20 tells us, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works within us. He expects us to ask. Amen? And asking is done with your mouth. And so you're not supposed to be afraid to ask. Amen? Uh, you have not because you ask not. Amen? I was told before, a squeaky wheel gets oil. So sometimes you got to ask. Sometimes you need to voice it, even though he knows what we have need of, even before we ask, but he still wants to hear it. Amen? Okay, so when I see, when I see, um, uh, when I see my, my daughter's not, Emily, she, Emily's not here tonight, so I can pick on her. So Emily's not here. So there's times when Emily will go through the house and just, she's vacuuming, she's doing windows, she's at the refrigerator, cleaning the refrigerator out, she's done the dishes, she done folded laundry. Emily, what you want? Because you're doing all this other stuff, right? Go ahead and ask, because all these other things that you're doing, or letting me know that you want something, right? And, and you're already my baby girl. Just go ahead and ask, amen? So asking, asking is done with your mouth. You're supposed to ask him, and he wants you to ask, and, and, you, and thank you, God. And you don't ask people that you don't think can deliver. You don't ask of them for something that you know they won't give it to you. But when he says to ask me, He's saying, you know I can do anything and can do all things. So ask me. Amen? Don't be, don't be disappointed when you ask somebody else that couldn't deliver. They couldn't. But if you ask me, I can. So it's one of those that we're supposed to, the Bible says, go boldly. Everybody say boldly. Go boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy in your time of need. It means don't be shy if you're going to ask. And for heaven's sake, if you're going to ask, ask big. I mean, if you're really going to ask, and you know that he's created all things and that the earth is the Lord's and the, and, and, and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein, and the Bible says the earth is actually a footstool to God. So if, if he's that big and if that, we're doing him a disservice when we're not asking big because you're big enough. Amen? And see, and everybody say this, it's, it's according to your faith. So it's one of those that, that somebody might believe on one level, but that's the level that you believe on. But I might believe on a totally different level. Yes? And so it's, and, and you'll get what you're believing for, but I'll also get what I'm believing for. It's because of the revelation that I have. I believe that he's big enough. I don't believe that he can just handle my, my September. I believe that he can handle my whole year. Right? He's big enough to take care of that. Right? And so it's, a, it's according to your faith. It's according to what you believe. So oftentimes when a miracle took place, Jesus said, be it unto you according to you, have you how you believed. Or, and so it's one of those, when we ask God, we're also getting him involved. 
Because it's one thing for you to handle your business because we've been told that you gotta, you gotta, you gotta put your feet up, you gotta, you gotta put your jeans on, you put your boots on, you gotta handle your business, you gotta do what you gotta do. But there's oftentimes, there's things that we can't handle that are outside our sphere, outside our senses, we can't write a check for, that we need God to fix for us. And you need to ask. And when you ask, you're inviting him into your situation. You believe that he can handle it. You'll get him involved in it with your mouth. Amen? Everybody say ask. So he said ask, and it shall be given unto you. That there's no waiting in it. If you ask, I'll give it to you. If you're not going to tiptoe around it, if you're not going to walk on eggshells, but if you just blatantly ask, because he wants us to be brutally honest, because he's going to be brutally honest. So he says, go ahead and ask, because I already know what you need, and I can deliver. It might not come the way you thought it should come, but I will indeed answer that prayer. Amen? Because you know you're not supposed to give God a blueprint anyway. I'm guilty of it, but you're not supposed to. Right, it's, it's, it's totally up to him whether he wants to follow the, the blueprint that you give to him, but it's still, I'm asking. I'm not going to be shy, right? So it's one of those, you, put, you petition him and you place that before him and say, Lord, this is what's going on in my life. This is what's going on in my heart. This is what's going on in my family. This is what happened. I got some crazy coworkers. I got some crazy fa You're putting all that before God, and I'm asking God to fix it. Amen? And he said, if you ask, it shall be given. Whatever, whatever, everybody say shall. Thank you, first leg. Shall implies that it's coming. If you ask, it shall be given unto you. That he's not with, the Bible says he's not withholding one good thing from them that love the Lord. If it's not going to hurt you, he's going to give it to you. If it's going to harm you, you can't have it. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. My Lord, so my grandson, my grandson, Micah, has a Batmobile outside. Amen? He's got a Batmobile. Yeah, thank you. He's got a Batmobile outside, and he'll just drive it around the yard. He'll drive it in the backyard and stuff like that. But when we want to go somewhere, he'll grab the key to my, to my truck or something, and he'll stand outside the, the truck. You can't drive. He'll stand outside with the key, and he wants to go for We can't go for a ride right now, and you, can't, you definitely can't drive, right? But he wants it but he can't have it because it's going to harm him. He's not ready for that. Your heavenly father knows what you are ready for and what you can handle and what you can't handle. So it's not like he's not going to give it to you, but he's going to give it to you when you're prepared to handle it, also if it's not going to harm you. Amen? So there's no, there's, it's, it's not like he's withholding. Some things are held for you, not held from you. So it's one of those where I'm just, he's just waiting for the opportune time and then you can get the keys. Waiting for the opportune moment, and then he'll unlock the door for you. But delays, delays are not denials. Just because it's been held up doesn't mean he's not going to give it to you. But, he's, but there's, there's maneuvering that he does that we oftentimes don't see. There's pieces on the chessboard that he moves around to get things lined up for you to make sure that you're in the right place, not only in the right place physically, but the right place mentally. Because some things I asked God for years ago, I really don't even want now. Because my, my mindset's different at this moment. But I was just, I was just okay, I can ask. Because he left them blank scriptures out there. John 14, 14 says, whatever you ask in my name, I'll do it. But don't give me a scripture like that unless you want me to ask. Please say amen, yes? So John 14, 14, you know, is, 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 is my scripture that I share with y'all. I put my name on, that's my thing. Because that scripture spoke to me at the time that I needed. So it's always been a reminder to me to ask. And so I was asking for everything, and I got a few things. I got a few things. I got a few things. But those, but those other things, even though he's God, and even though I asked, those other things weren't really necessary. Those other things were fleshy at the moment. I was in the moment. Give me this. Give me that, right? And just, you know. And so, but it's one of those he gave me, he gave me what, what I needed. But he also was kind enough to also give me the desires of my heart as well. But he made sure that the things that I didn't receive at the moment were held up for a later moment. But now it's one of those that I'm, but I realize 
what I asked for, I was asking amiss. I really didn't need. I was asking in that moment. Right? So, so everybody say ask. So asking is done with your mouth, and Ephesians 3.20 is that scripture with that. So it, for everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. Everybody say seek. Okay, so if you're going to ask, you're going to use your mouth. If you're going to seek, you're going to use your eyes. Which then implies for us to stay focused on God. Amen? Okay, so Peter would co-sign for that. The moment he's walking on the water and he takes his eyes off Jesus, he starts sinking. But as long as he keeps his eyes on him, stays focused on him, he's, he's able to, to rise above even man's laws and literally walk on water as long as he stays focused on God. Amen? Hebrews 12, verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith, and for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised and the shame. He kept his eyes on the promise. And we're supposed to look to Jesus for whatever we're in need of. Keep looking towards him. Jeremiah, thank you, God. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, When you seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Amen? So one of the things as believers we're not supposed to stop doing is seeking. We should never get in a place where we, where, we, where we stale on Jesus, where it's the same old same, right? The church is, church is usual. We'll slide in at 11, 1030. It's, you know, I got an outfit for... It shouldn't be that we become stale to us where we don't begin... We stop seeking the Lord throughout the week. Because all of a sudden, okay, because after, after a while, if you've been stewardshiping, stewardshiping everything right, after a while, your bill's going to be taken care of. After a while, your wild children going to be fine. After a while, your house is going to be good. After, everybody say after a while. After a while, things will line up for you, and you'll be smooth sailing, but that's, that's not a time to stop seeking. Just because everything good means that we're supposed to lay off a bit because all the bills are paid. I'm good. I don't have to pray about this. That prayer's been answered. I was sick before, now I'm healed. Everything's good. I'll skip Sunday. I don't have to go Sunday. Everything's kosher. He said, don't ever stop seeking. Don't ever lose that seek within you that you, des that you lose desire for knowing God and getting close to God. Amen? The Bible also talks about restoring the joy of salvation. It's one of those things where when you know that you were saved, you know that God came into your heart, you know he opened your eyes so that you could see. He said, don't lose sight of that, that joy that you have, and don't lose sight of that relationship. Thank you, God. Because it, it, it is about relation. When we think about ask, seek, and knock, it is about relationship. You're not supposed to ask anybody anything that you're not in relationship with. Right? You're not supposed to be seeking for anybody that's going to be harmful to you. You're not supposed to be knocking on the door of somebody that you don't know. So he immediately applies that there's relationship involved when you're asking, you're seeking, and you're knocking. But you should never get to the place where church becomes business as usual. You should never get to the place where church becomes complacent, where it becomes something I have to do, a base I have to cover, but it's not... It, but I've lost the idea that I'm supposed to keep trying to encounter God. Oh, can I talk to y'all? Can I talk to y'all? I just heard the Lord talking to me. Because here's the thing, here's the thing. Sometimes, sometimes in the process of seeking, church people make it hard to seek. Sometimes I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying to come to the house. I'm trying to get into the house of God. I'm trying to get into service. I'm trying to get into ministry. But then it's the people in ministry that are uptight. Or the people in ministry that don't want to talk. Or the people in, people in ministry get clickish. It's like, you know, we, that the five of us can go out to eat except you. What is that? When I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm, tr I'm, tr I'm trying. I'm trying to press in. I'm trying to be available. I've been listening to the messages, so I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to put application to what I've been hearing, and I'm, tr I'm, trying, to, I'm trying to fit in. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do my part. I'm trying to use my gift as God has given to me because I'm realizing I have something that I can bring to the table, but you don't give me room. I got something to offer. I can see, what, I can see what's wrong. 
And if I can see what's wrong, that means I, I might be the answer to what's wrong. So I can identify what's up in the house, but you won't let me help. Right? So when, he, so when you think about seeking, then I'm trying to seek, I'm trying to get into the presence of the Lord. I also then got to pray, Lord, that you got you to gotta cleanse the atmosphere and change some things around so I don't lose sight of you. Because right now, the people around, your people making it difficult for me. I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to be honest. God, your people making it difficult for me to seek. I'm trying to seek. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to pray. I'm, tr I'm trying to, I'm trying to be co-laborers in the kingdom. But the, but the people I'm trying to co-labor with don't really believe in unity. It's something, that, it's something that's a part of our Christianese that we like to say that we're supposed to be in unity, but when the time, when the rubber beats the road, nobody wants to unite. Everybody say seek. Seek implies that I got to use my eyes, I got to stay focused on God so I don't sin. And I got to make sure that in the process of seeking, Thank you, Lord, that I don't lose that thirst because they that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. So I got to stay hungry. I got to stay focused. I got to keep going. It might be difficult because some of those times, some of those difficult moments are meant for me to press through. So I got to be persistent. So even so whenever whenever there's an issue about coming to the house of God, that must mean that there's something in the house of God I need to get. Because every time the enemy tries to come against me and then something comes up to try and hinder me from getting to the house, it must mean I must need to seek even more because there's something that's going to be revealed to me that night I get there. Amen? Come on, you know crazy stuff happens right before you decide to go to church? Yes? The ch you know, the, the children can't find shoes. You can't find your car keys. You wear your purse at. Something, something go, something go. The purse on your shoulder. You still looking for your purse? Because something going to come up. Yes, your, the phone's your American Express card, so you got to find your phone. Somebody, somebody call the phone so I can figure out where the phone's at, but the phone's now on vibrate so I can't hear it or it's dead or something. But, see, but this is right before service because you're about to seek. And if the enemy can try to keep your eyes off Christ for a moment, he would hinder you from seeking. Thank you, God, because when you seek, you're going to find. Thank you, God. He said, because you're, it will never be in vain when you seek. Because when you seek, you're going to find what you've been looking for. Amen? Thank you, God. We, did, we gave the parable about the lost pearl on Sunday, and, we gave the, and, and how, how they would turn over everything looking for the lost pearl. And a man buried treasure, and he hid the treasure in the ground. And then because of the love for that treasure, he went and bought the whole land to make sure that that place was safe. And and you got to keep seeking. Amen? You got to keep seeking. Thank you, God. It, thank you, God. If you're in a relationship, you got to keep dating. Yes? You shouldn't just become roommates. After y'all exchange rings, you shouldn't just become roommates then that we're going we gonna, to we gonna go half on the bills and we're going to be good and, you know, and we're just going to watch the kids. We're going to make sure the house is good. And then, no, no, you're still supposed to keep dating. You're still supposed to keep seeking in that relationship, right? For the reason that the love that brought you two together, you're still supposed to keep seeking that and stay focused on that. Amen? And go deeper into that because intimacy, it, thank you, God, intimacy, intimacy is seeing into me. So you then have to keep seeking. Everybody say seek. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. When you seek, when you seek, you will find him. When you search for him, Jeremiah 29, when you search for him with your whole heart. Amen? So when we think about Jeremiah 29, 11, that talks about the plan. But Jeremiah 20, 29, 13 talks about seeking him because you want to know what the plan is. Okay, I know, I know you got plans for me. Okay, but you ain't supposed to just stay there and say, I know God's got plans for me. Thank God for the plans that he has for you. But you're supposed to read the verses after that that says you're supposed to seek him. If you seek him, then he will reveal the plans that he has for you. Those plans that are good and not of evil to give you an expected end. But you got to seek him. 
Amen? He'll reveal, the book of Revelation is revealing that he's going to reveal to you, but you got to see. So you got to keep your eyes on him, stay focused on him. Amen? All right, everybody say knock. The Bible says knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. So if asking is done with your mouth, seeking is done with your eyes, and knocking is done with your hands, right? Praise is done with your hands. And when you think about knocking or knowing, what some, knowing where somebody lives and knowing that they're there, right? Knocking also implies pulling them closer, okay? If he inhabits the praises of his people, it then pulls him closer, amen? So there's, so there's things that we're supposed to do with our mouths, uh, with, our, with our words, with our hands, with our eyes. He says, put your hands together and, and praise God and, and lift God up, but also pull him closer. If you're in a relationship and you love someone, you want them close to you. And at times you want to pull them closer. Parents pull their children closer. You pull your spouse closer because you love them and you want them close to you. When, you. when you're going through, you want people around you that understand you and you want to pull them closer, right? Distance, thank you, God. Distance can, can, uh, can break up a relationship. And you can be distant in the same house. So you then got to pull people closer. You got, you got to turn the phone off. Got to turn the TV off. Tonight's not the night for all the extra stuff. Tonight's about us, right? It's about us eating. It's about us talking. It's about us getting closer, seeking and being close and pulling them closer. Don't allow distance to come in because if distance has come in, the enemy can creep in, right? Because the enemy will creep in when there's distance and say, well, you're better off without them. Look how far you've gone without them. You don't really need them. But we know that the devil is alive. And he wants distance because he wants you isolated. Because if he got you isolated, he can, he can beat up on you when you're by yourself. Amen? Everybody say knock. Okay, he said, when you knock, the door is going to be open unto you. And look at the steps of that. If you're, if you're asking with your mouth, seeking with your eyes, and now you're at the place where he is. Because it shows progression. Because I was asking at first, where is he at? Now I'm seeking because somebody said here around town. And now somebody said he's down the street. Now I'm knocking because now I know where he live at. It's one of those, it's, it shows us as we're consistent with asking and seeking, then we'll find where he is. And then we can knock. Oh, I know you're in there. I didn't just come over to the house because I, the car's outside. I know you. It's, it's one of those where he's showing you that as, as, you be, as you continue in asking, then all of a sudden you begin seeking. After seeking, all of a sudden he reveals, I'm right here. He said, knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. That, you know, that you're already welcomed in because you've already been asking and seeking. And now that you're knocking, the door will be opened unto you. Amen? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You know the doors open automatically at Walmart, don't you? You don't have to put your hands on them. It's one of those when you, when you get to the place... Yes? He said, knock, and it'll be open unto you. Whatever was closed previously to you, thank you, God. That's prophetic. And now it's open unto you because you've been asking and you've been seeking, and now you're knocking. You're knocking. Now, now what you're asking for and seeking for is now tangible because you can't knock on air, right? but I was asking for where you were. I was seeking where you were, and now I know where you are, and now it's tangible. I'm literally knocking on the door of his heart. I know where he is because I was asking and I was seeking. I was, I was consistent and persistent this whole time, and then what I was believing God for became tangible and real where I could knock on it because that word for knock means to, to rap or to consistently tap. I know you're in there. I know you're there. Amen? And I'm here, and the door shall be open unto you. Amen? Okay, let's, 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 let's get this last verse before we go. Revelations, Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20 says, let me, let me read it to you. I was going to give it to you verbatim, but I don't want to mess that thing up. Revelation 3.20. 
The Bible said you already, you're blessed for reading the book of Revelation. Don't be scared of Revelation. He said you're blessed for reading this book and the contents thereof. Revelation 3.20 says, behold. Everybody say behold. Behold implies at look. Okay, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. Okay, so when Revelation 3.20 tells us that Jesus did the same thing when he was trying to reach us. He's not going to give you, he's not going to tell you to do something that he's not first already done. Right? Okay, the, the, when Paul says to you in Ephesians to put on the full armor of God, he's not going to, means it's already been proven. He's not going to tell you to put on something that doesn't work. He's not going to tell you to ask, seek, and knock unless he is first asked, sought, and knocked as well. So when he says in Revelation 3.20, he immediately says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Just what he said you were going to do. If any man hear my voice, mean he opened up his mouth, just like he said you are going to do. And the door will be open, just like he said the door will be open. I will come unto him, I will sup with him, and he with me. So he's not going to ask you to do something that ain't already proven. Amen? Amen? So he wants us to know that there's, that there's credibility behind what he's telling you to do. That it's not in vain. That you're gonna, if you ask, thank you, God. If you ask, it's going to be given unto you. If you seek, you're going to find. If you knock, the door is going to be open to you. If you have a son that asks for bread of his father, are you going to give him a stone? He said, that don't really make sense. Well, he didn't ask for that. He said, he said, but, he said but, but think about how I feel. He said, if you ask of me, I'm not going to give you the opposite. If you're, going, if you're going to give you bread, it's going to be nourishment to you. I'm not going to give you a stone. But it's also a picture of law and grace. Amen? Okay, whenever you see stone in the word, you can also think about uh, the woman that was caught in the act of adultery, and she was supposed to be stoned, right? But he didn't give her stones. He gave her bread. He gave her grace, right? Instead of the stone. He said the oldest to the youngest all dropped their rocks, and they left. And he said, I don't see any accusers. So instead of the stone, he gave bread. Instead of the stone tablets of the law, he extended grace. Please say amen to that. So when he's, when he's talking about your son wanting bread, he's also saying your son might need, might need grace. Don't beat him with the law. Okay, there's, there's a, there, when it comes, when it, thank you, God. And when it, comes, when it comes to parenting, you don't get a book on it. You, you don't get a book on it, you, just, you, you do the best you can, right? You do the best you can. But there's times, there's times when you correct but then there's times that are teaching moments, right? That there's times when, you, okay, you done, you done messed up this time, okay, I, you, correct this, you correct on this one, right? But then there's also times where you then sit there and talk about what you have done, and then you make better decisions, right? Okay, thank you, thank you, God. I'm from the spanking generation. A amen or ouch, one or the other. I'm from the spanking generation. I've only spanked, only, I was only spanked a few times. Amen? I was smart when I was young. I was only, I was only spanked a few times, but I got it. it was, but it was also what was, more, what was more painful to me uh, was knowing that I, I did my mother or father wrong. Okay, for, in, okay, for instance, I knew I messed up. I knew I messed up. I'm, I'm younger. I knew I messed up. I got to come home and take my medicine. So I knew I messed up. But I'm like, I'm like 16, 17 at that moment or whatever. So spankers aren't really on the table. No amens? I'm still subject to get a, a good shaking, but spankers aren't on the table. But it was one of those where when we had a conversation, I remember her saying, I remember her saying that I, I disappointed her. And I, and, and that felt worse than a spanking. 
here, here in a, that was, and, and that you disappointed me and, and, uh, and you knew better than this. And then just walked off. And I remember just standing there like, darn. And, and, and so that comes back to my mind. It's, it's, as, it's one of those reminders where that you, that you want to make sure to honor your mother and your father, but you also want to keep, you want to keep respect and, and don't want to make that same mistake again, right? Your heavenly father knows how to handle you. Knows, nobody spanks like God does, right? His spankers are different. Nobody spanks like God does, and he knows how to handle you and, and how to handle the situation so that the situation doesn't handle you, right? The, the Bible said he makes a way of escape. Thank you, God. That he makes a way of escape that you might be able to bear it, that you might be able to handle it. That means that God stopped what was going on and pulled you out, but still let you know you got away with this one only by the grace of God. So he's, it's, so he's got a way of keeping everything intact and correcting you and letting you know not to do that again. Because when the woman was caught in an act of adultery, he said, go and sin no more. It wasn't that she wasn't guilty. It was just that everybody else was guilty too, and they just, right? You can't, again, you, you can't bring somebody before Jesus in act of adultery unless you know they're doing it, which means you're watching, which means you're wrong too. And so it's one of those where he, he says then, he said, I don't see your accusers anymore. And then he says, go and sin no more. It means grace has come to you, but don't do it again. Amen? Because grace is not a crutch where you can just do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. It's meant to help you if you, if you stumble or if you fall. It's meant to help you. But he said, go and sin no more. He said, if you got a son that wants bread, you wouldn't give him a stone. Bread is going to be nourishment to him. He's not going to eat a stone. A stone is going to harm him. He says, as a parent, you're going to give the child what they need. You're going to give them a yes when they need a yes. You're going to give them a no when they need a no. Because children need no just as much as they need yes. Amen. Amen. Or if, he, if you ask an egg, ask one egg, will he offer him a serpent? If you then be an evil, because what is, what is that? If you ask for an egg, and would you give him a serpent? Would you give him something that's going to harm him? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Oh, okay, so then what you're saying then is that that serpent was something spiritual, that, that scorpion, was, scorpion was something spiritual. So he's saying you're going to make sure that you give them what they need spiritually so they will not harm them. So, and then he says, he says, because he tells us in Luke, Luke the, same, the same book of Luke, he tells us that he gives you power to tread over serpents and scorpions and any work of the enemy. So when he's talking to us there about serpents and scorpions, he's talking about making sure that you give your children the right spiritual diet. Don't give them, don't give them a stone. Give them bread. Don't give them a serpent. Don't allow stuff into their lives. That, that you have to try and pray off later, right? He said, because you got to govern your house accordingly. you got to make sure that you cover your house and protect your house, and just don't allow any craziness into your house. Amen? Thank you, God. Uh, which, I don't know which Halloween movie we on right now. I don't, know which, I don't know if it's eight or nine. I don't know which one we on now. But you're not supposed to be watching Halloween in front of your three-year-old. You didn't give them bread. You gave them a stone. They got nightmares from something that you were watching. So we got to make sure that we give them the right spiritual diet. Well, Pastor, you talk about I got to make sure. Don't, listen, it's one of those that you got to make sure that you govern your house. Now, listen, it's your house. You, cover, you do what you got to do at your house, right? But then you also understand that at 3 o'clock in the morning when they're knocking on your door, Talking about, can I come in there and lay down with you? Can I go to sleep? It's because it's because there's something that was introduced into their life that they weren't strong enough to handle. 
So we then got to make sure, okay, this, is, this, is, this might be too soon, right? We got we, we to be—we got to put down parental guidance, yes? Because what's PG might as well be, might as well be R because they're changing the rules. They're changing the rules because what's PG now is PG because it's not showing blood. But you're still doing everything else. So it's one of those that you got to police it according to your house, Right? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Can I give y'all something else before we leave? Okay, parents, got, you got to be on the same page. If, you, if you're not on the same page, you got to at least be in the same book. Amen. So when it comes to this one in, in the house, you got you to gotta, gotta put up a united front when it comes to that to make sure, okay, well, you know, Dad, let me watch it. Okay, you got to be on the same page because dad lets you watch it, mama don't want you to see it. Right? You got to be on the same page and make sure that there's no confusion. And then there's no division. Because when there's division, there's two heads. If there's two heads, it's a must, right? And so where there's division, there's also confusion. And then the children can choose sides. Dad's cooler because dad let me do everything. Mom's, you know, mom's uptight. But if you're on the same page, you're on the same page, and you're going to put up a united front, and you're going to make sure, okay, we got to figure out what's going to be beneficial because you know at their early age, they're sponges. Right? They, they say you're supposed to introduce foreign language to your children when they're like two and three. They're sponges, and they'll take in, and they, and they listen, listen. Even if you don't say anything, they still see what's going on, right? Thank you, God. Micah, okay, I said Micah already. Micah will go to the front door, will stand on a toy to try and unlock the door. Nobody said to him, because he's, he's, he's not two yet, but he's seen people go to the door, because he can already turn the knobs. But now he's seen people unlock the door. So now he, he'll move his little box over to the door, stand at the door and try and move the lock because he's seen what you've been doing in front of him. Amen? So we then got to be careful what we introduce and what we're doing in front of them. You don't want anything spiritual to slip into the house. You know, how would you, thank you, God. How do you have an ADT system that covers your house naturally and then don't have an ADT system that doesn't cover your house spiritually? If you got cameras outside of your house to make sure that you can see what's happening outside, why don't you have a spiritual lens on the inside to make sure that you would see what's happening spiritually in the house because what's happening inside could potentially be more detrimental than what's happening outside. He said, if, you, if, your, children, if your children are hungry, make sure you feed them right. Don't give him something that's going to harm him. If he, if he asks for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? The scorpion's poisonous. So then why would you introduce things at a young age that could potentially be poisonous to that child? It's, that's, that's not good parenting, and a parent wouldn't do that. Amen? But then he takes a step further and says, you being evil. He's, he's speaking to the people that are around him, and he said they were evil. Let's not skip over that. He said, if you being evil, because he, he said, I know your hearts, and you know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts unto you? Because, again, Ephesians 3.20 says he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ever ask, think, imagine, according to the power that works within you. He's always going to exceed your expectation. Amen? And he said, if, he said, if, if you're going to be, if you're worldly, worldly and, or carnal and going to be good to your children, he said, I'm always going to be better to mine because they're in the kingdom. And the king's kids shouldn't have to deal with leftovers. The king's kids should be blessed. They should be provided for, taken care of. They should go to the best schools. They should be an example because they're the king's kids. 
Amen? Everybody stand if you can. Thank you, God. Just for a moment if you can. Ask means to ask, to seek, and to knock. Then I'm going to be consistent and persistent. I'm going to ask with my mouth. I'm going to seek with my eyes. I'm going to knock with my hands. And the door shall be open as well. In whatever phase I'm in, whether I'm asking, I'm still going to be giving. If I'm seeking, I'm going to be finding. If I'm knocking, the door is going to be open to me. There is nowhere in the text where he's saying he's denying you when you're seeking him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every family that is represented here tonight. I thank you that no weapon formed shall ever prosper. I thank you, Father, for not withholding one good thing, Father. We saw in your word that all we got to do is ask. All we got to do is seek and knock, dear Lord, that we were supposed to be consistent and persistently seeking after you to know you and to get close to you. I thank you right now, Father, that you'll be found of, we'll be found of you. That, and and we, when we seek after you with our whole hearts, Father, that we won't procrastinate. We won't wait till times get rough but we'll still continue to seek you even in the good times to prepare us for tough times. Father, that we don't want to lose sight of you in the midst of everything that's going on in the world, everything that's happening in our nation, everything that's happening even locally. Our focus still needs to remain on you. I thank you right now, Father, that we will, that we will look to the hills from which comes our help. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Father, we'll stay focused on you. Father, we saw where the stock market was going down today. But we'll stay focused on you. When there's still war in Ukraine, but we'll stay focused on you. There's been shootings in Charlottesville every, every week for the past three or four weeks, but we'll stay focused on you. Father, there's a new election that's going to take place in November, but we'll stay focused on you. So, Father, we thank you right now. There's hurricanes. There's wars and rumors of wars. Father, we're going to stay focused on you. Father, you got the answer to all things. So, Lord, we thank you that we won't lose sight of, of you in the midst of everything that's going on. We won't be too busy uh, that we forget to, to keep our eye on you, to forget to pray, forget to read, forget to talk. We want to keep the relationship solid. We want to keep the lines of communication open, Father, so we will continue to seek. So, Father, we thank you tonight for a reminder in your word, a reminder in your word to, to be diligent, to continue to go after you. Like the deer panteth after the water brook, so does my soul thirst after thee in a, in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Father, we thank you right now, Father, that we, we don't want to be stale and we don't want to be dry, Father. We don't want to go through dry seasons where we're not hearing you anymore, where we're not happy anymore. Father, where we're not joyful anymore. Father, we thank you. We need you to keep us in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on you. We need to stay focused on you, God. So we thank you right now that you got all the answers, and we thank you that you're going to reveal good things to us. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Let's receive the blessing tonight. We, tomorrow night, uh, the women tomorrow night are going to be at El Mariachi. That's at Zion's Crossroads. That's tomorrow night at 630. If you're a woman and you're hungry, that's your only qualification. If you're a woman and you're hungry, be there tomorrow night at 630. That's at Zion's Crossroads uh, for dinner with some good ladies and, and some fellowship and good food. That's tomorrow night. I already alluded to you already that this is all, that we're already in a new year. Uh, Rosh Hashanah began, began last Sunday to last Tuesday. So it's also a picture of the new year starting, that there's, a new year doesn't particularly start just on the 31st. A new year can start when you get a new mindset. The moment you get a new mindset, you're in a new year. So it's one of those that we have to have the mindset to, 
that, the, that there's a newness or freshness that's beginning and to begin to look forward to what God is doing. Amen? Amen. So again, that's tomorrow night for the ladies, tomorrow night at 6.30. Um, the men suck it up. Those who are just sucking up, you're good. This, you should be able to feed yourself anyway. You should, amen? So that's tomorrow night, 6.30. Is there anything else that's going on? Praise the Lord. Let's remember DV, uh, Carol Drain, and a co-worker uh, that lost his son. It's been a difficult time. Uh, Kimberly Jamison lost her son. We remember her, the Jamison family, uh, and the Step family as well. They lost a son, so we want to keep them covered in prayer. Um, my sister Chanta lost somebody close to her as well. Um, let's keep them all lifted in prayer. Let's receive the blessing tonight. Thank you for being here tonight. We pray that the word, the word continues to play with you even after you leave that we stay hungry, we stay thirsty, we stay in the book. May the road rise up and meet your feet. May the wind be at your back. May the glory of God shine upon your face, and may you forever be standing in the center of your harvest. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Be blessed tonight. Be safe tonight. Thank you for being here. Watch out for Bambi. Watch out for Bambi. Deer season, hunting season is going to start in another week or so. So be careful. They're going to be spooked. They're going to be jumping out everywhere on these back roads. So be careful. Thank you for being here tonight.